It's time to relax, grab a drink, pull up a chair by the hearth, and have a seat in the scald circle, and listen to the tale of how two sweetheart dippies sat in the moonlight on a lumberyard fence and heard about the Sooners and Boomers from North American folklore, as told by Manoogan. Before we begin our story, we wanted to remind you that we release new tales for free every week. Our shorter tales release on Wednesdays, and our longer chapter stories release on every other Saturday. Find out where you can hear them on our website at thescaldcircle.com. And be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way, you'll never miss out on one of our enchanting tales from around the world. Now then, without further ado, this is How Two Sweetheart Dippies Sat in the Moonlight on a Lumberyard Fence and Heard About the Sooners and Boomers from North American Folklore, as told by Minogan. Not so very far and not so very near the village of Liver and Onions is a dippy little town where dippy people used to live. And it was a long, long ago. The sweetheart dippy stood in their windows and watched the dips of the star dippers in the dip of the sky. It was the dippies who took the running wild oleander and the cunning wild rambler rose and kept them so the running wild winters left them alone. It's so easy to be a dippy among the dippies, isn't it? The sweetheart dippies whispered to each other, sitting in the leaf shadows of the oleander, the rambler rose. Now, the name of this dippy town came about by accident. The name of the town is Thumbs Up, and it used to be Thumbs Down, and expects to change its name back and forth between Thumbs Up and Thumbs Down. The running wild oleander and the running wild rambler roses grow there, over the big lumber yards where the old lumber goes. The dippies and the dippy sweethearts go out there to those lumber yards and sit on the fence moonlight nights and look at the lumber. The rusty nails in the lumber get rustier and rustier till they drop out. And whenever they drop out, there is always a rat standing on it to take the nail in his teeth and chew the nail and eat it. For this is the place the nail-eating rats come to from all over the rutabaga country. Father rats and mother rats send the young rats there to eat nails and get strong. If a young rat comes back from a trip to the lumber yards and thumbs up, and he meets another young rat going to those lumber yards, they say to each other, Oh, where have you been? Two thumbs up. And how do you feel? Hard as nails. Now one night, two of the dippies, a sweetheart boy and girl, went out to the big lumber yards and sat on the fence and looked at the lumber and saw the running wild oleanders and the running wild rambler roses. And then they saw two big rusty nails getting rustier and rustier, and then they dropped out of the lumber and dropped into the teeth of two young rats. And the two young rats sat up on their tails there in the moonlight under the oleanders, under the roses, and one of the young rats told the other young rat a story he made up out of his head, chewing on the big rusty nail and then swallowing, telling more of the story after swallowing, and before beginning to chew the nail again. Now, this is the story he told. And this is a story the two dippies, the two sweethearts, sitting on the fence in the moonlight, heard. Far away, where the sky drops down, and the sunsets open doors for the nights to come through, where the running winds meet, change faces, and come back, there is a prairie where the green grass grows all around. And on that prairie, the gophers, the black and brown striped ground squirrels, sit with their backs straight up, sitting on their soft paddy tails, sitting in the spring-song murmur of the south wind, and they say to each other, This is the prairie, and the prairie belongs to us. Now, far back in the long time, the gophers came there chasing each other, playing the green grass grew all around, playing cross-tag, hop-tag, skip-tag, billy-be-tag, billy be it. The razorback hogs came then, eating pig-nuts, potatoes, pawpaws, and pumpkins. The wild horse and the buffalo came. The moose with spraggly branches of antlers spreading out over his head. The moose came. Oh, oh, and then the fox and the wolf. The gophers flipped a quick flip-flop back into the gopher holes. When the fox and the wolf came, and the fox, the wolf, stood at the holes and said, You look like rats. 
You run like rats. You are rats, rats with stripes. <laughs> you are only rats. <laughs> and it was the first time anybody had laughed at the gophers. They sat in a circle with their noses up, asking, What does ba mean? What does this laughter mean? And an old-timer with his hair falling off in patches, with the stripes on his soft potty tail patched with patches, this old-timer of a gopher said, Ba speaks more than it means whenever it is spoken. Then the Sooners and the Boomers came, saying Ba, and saying it many, many new ways, till the fox, the wolf, the moose, the wild horse, the buffalo, the razorback hog, picked up their feet and ran away without looking back. The Sooners and the Boomers began making houses, sod houses, log, lumber, and plaster and lath houses, stone, brick, steel houses. But most of the houses were lumber with nails to hold the lumber together to keep the rain off and push the wind back and hold the blizzards outside. In the beginning, the Sooners and Boomers told stories, spoke jokes, made songs with their arms on each other's shoulders. They dug wells, helping each other get water. They even built chimneys together, helping each other let the smoke out of their houses. And every year, the day before Thanksgiving, they went in cahoots with their post hole diggers and dug all the post holes for a year to come. That was in the morning. In the afternoon, they took each other's cistern cleaners and cleaned all the cisterns for a year to come. And the next day on Thanksgiving, they split turkey wishbones and thanked each other. They had all dug the post holes and all the cisterns clean for the year to come. If the boomers had to have broom corn to make their brooms, the Sooners came saying, Well, here's your broom corn. And if the Sooners had to have a gallon of molasses, the boomers came saying, Oh, here's your gallon of molasses. And they handed each other big duck eggs to fry, big goose eggs to boil, purple pigeon eggs for Easter breakfast. Wagon loads of buff banty eggs went back and forth between the Sooners and Boomers, and they took big hay racks full of buff banty hens and traded them for hay racks full of buff banty roosters. And one time, at a picnic, one summer afternoon, the Sooners gave the Boomers a thousand golden ice tongs with hearts and hands carved on the handles, and the Boomers gave the Sooners a thousand silver wheelbarrows of hearts and hands carved on the handles. Then came the pigs, 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 and more pigs. And the Sooners and Boomers said the pigs had to be painted. They then went to war to decide whether the pigs should be painted pink or green, and pink won. The next war was to decide whether the pigs should be painted checks or stripes, and checks won. The next war after that was to decide whether the checks should be painted pink or green, and green won. Then came the longest war of all. Up till that time, and this war decided the pigs should be painted both pink and green, both checks and stripes. They rested then. But it was only a short rest, for then came the war to decide whether peach pickers must pick peaches on Tuesday mornings or on Saturday afternoons. And Tuesday mornings won. That was a short war. Then came a long war to decide whether telegraph pole climbers must eat onions at noon with spoons or whether dishwashers must keep their money in pig's ears with padlocks pinched on with pinchers. So the wars went on. Between wars, they called each other goofs and snoofs, grave robbers, pickpockets, porch climbers, pie thieves, pie face, mutts, bums, big bums, big greasy bums, dummies, mummies, rummies, sneezics, bohunks, wops, snorkies, ditch diggers, peanuts, fatheads, sapheads, pinheads, pickle faces, horse thieves, rubbernecks, big pieces of cheese, big bags of wind, Snabs, scabs, and dirty, sniveling snitches. And sometimes, they got tired of calling each other names. Then they scratched in the air with their fingers and made faces with their tongues out, twisted like pretzels. After a while, it seemed there was no corn, no broom corn, no brooms. Not even tiny sweepings of corn on broom. And there were no duck eggs to fry, goose eggs to boil, no buff banty eggs. No buff banty hens. No buff banty roosters, no wagons for wagon loads of buff banty eggs, no hay racks for hay rack loads of buff banty hens and buff banty roosters. And the thousand golden ice tongs the Sooners gave the Boomers, and the thousand silver wheelbarrows the Boomers gave the Sooners, 
both with the hearts and hands carved on the handles. They were long ago broken up in one of the early wars deciding pigs must be painted, both pink and green with both checks and stripes. And now, at last, there were no more pigs to paint either pink or green or with checks or stripes. The pigs, pigs, pigs were gone. So the Sooners and the Boomers all got lost in the wars, or they screwed wooden legs on their stump legs and walked away to bigger, bigger prairies, or they started away for the rivers and the mountains, stopping always to count how many fleas there were in any bunch of fleas that they met. If you see anybody who stops to count fleas in a bunch of fleas, that is a sign he is either a Sooner or a Boomer. So again, the gophers, the black-striped brown squirrels, sit with their back straight up, sitting on their soft paddy tails, sitting in the spring-song murmur of the south wind, saying, This is the prairie, and the prairie belongs to us. And then, far away today, where the sky drops down and the sunset opens doors for the nights to come through, where the running winds meet changing faces and coming back, there the gophers are playing the green grass grew all around, playing cross-tag, skip-tag, hop-tag, billy-be-tag, billy be it. And sometimes they sit in a circle and ask, What does this bar mean? And an old-timer answers, Bar speaks more than it means whenever it is spoken. So that was the story the young rat under the oleanders, under the roses, told the other young rat, while the two sweetheart dippies sat on the fence in the moonlight, looking at the lumberyard and listening. The young rat who told the story hardly got started eating the nail he was chewing, while the young rat that did the listening chewed up and swallowed down a whole nail. As the two dippies on the fence looked at the running wild oleander and the running wild rambler roses over the lumber in the moonlight, they said to each other, It's easy to be a dippy among the dippies, isn't it? And they climbed down from the fence and went home in the moonlight. And that is the story of how two sweetheart dippies sat in the moonlight on a lumberyard fence and heard about the Sooners and Boomers. Thank you for listening to our story. If you enjoyed it, we recommend taking a look at our Patreon page as noted in the description below. You can earn great rewards while also supporting us to keep these stories alive for future generations to come. Also remember to subscribe to us on your podcast application and leave us a five-star rating if you enjoyed the story. A special thank you to Kat for their support this month. Without your contribution, we wouldn't be able to continue these stories, and we truly appreciate it. Visit thescaldcircle.com to stay up to date with all of our current events, news, and much more. Not only that, but you can also visit our story archive of every tale we have told. It's sorted by origin and region for the convenience of your listening pleasure. Thank you for listening to our story.